Hey love, you got your heart on your sleeve, but the shirt on your back's a bit small. Hey you, yeah your colors are changing, the world ain't half bad after all. Na na na. than Wyoming in the fall. This is a part of our strategy here to make the antelope feel comfortable. When they know you don't have boots on, they just kind of assume you don't know what you're doing. So it's that unassuming tactic that you really got to keep in mind. So just a little something for all you out there. Think of this pronghorn right here. It's a nice spot. Yeah. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Brad. Ready to go find Time some for a morning jog? Yeah. Let's go find some ammo. So this morning we're kind of on the western, kind of the very edge of our unit, where it kind of pushes up into the timber because there's this kind of mixture of private and public land, but there's these great little pockets of land that I don't think anybody's gonna hit. We just uh, got up here to our glassing spot and had a classic Wyoming moment where I got my cow call out because I heard a elk bugle. And then I uh, give a few calls and he bugled right back. And I looked to the right and there's like a herd of problems. So. I don't know if there's a better place than Wyoming in the fall. This is incredible. We had a bunch of rain last night. So everything's just kind of soaking wet, muddy. But just all the animals are out this morning. Just a stunningly beautiful clear sky morning. Couldn't be happier. Just a cool spot. We got pronghorn kind of all down below us. And it's kind of hard to tell. If they're on private versus public land. Because it's not really clearly delineated. So, thankfully, we got Onyx maps. You got Sean Vanderman. Got Buck and two does. So progressive. Living in their thruple. <laughs> yeah, out there was two ladies staring us down from we'll call that a mile and a half. <laughs> Feeling very threatened for a mile and a half away. I don't know. He seems interesting. I mean, you know, you're dealing with like a very small image of that distance. But... So we've completely relocated. So come out of kind of that transition mountain desert zone down here into the, to the flats down here. And we're just kind of weaving our way along this block of public ground that's surrounded by private land here. And not seeing quite as many antelope, but you can just kind of see a handful kind of off in the distance as we're looking here. And looks like we found a decent buck over here, but it's really hard to tell through the spotter right now because everything's just kind of like got that shimmery heat wave going on right now. So just trying to figure out whether or not it's worth going after him or 
continuing to try and window shop here. Just want you to know how serious this hunt is. I have uh, I have my Crocs on still right now because we're driving around in the truck. You know it's a good hunt when you're able to wear Crocs for at least a portion of it. This is a part of our strategy here to make the antelope feel comfortable. When they know you don't have boots on, they just kind of assume you don't know what you're doing. So it's that unassuming tactic that you really got to keep in mind. So just a little something for all you out there. We had a nice buck come across the come across the road, cut by the truck, and sprinted off. Don't know if it's still gonna be within striking distance, but we're gonna walk up the hill here and see if it's still there. Last time we saw it, it was running very, very fast. them off a fair distance or they ran a fair distance away. Now I gotta make a big circle try and get out in front of them. It's a pretty nice buck though. So I'll see if we can get Sean in place for it. Alright it didn't go as we had hoped. As we got up here to the high spot where we thought we'd be able to see them they were back down on the private ground. So now we're going back to the truck and back to go try some, try and find some more pronghorn. That was our first, first stock of the trip though, so it couldn't have worked out. Got to get the work the kinks out. He was calling them pronghorn. Are they not pronghorn? We're in Wyoming. <laughs> They're antelope here, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Pronghorn. Gentleman calls him pronghorn. He's not a giant, but he's really nice. Like... Their colors are always like so striking that they always just like look like they're like in good health. You could walk up to them and they could be like on their last.
Did I miss him? I don't know. Well, we snuck into 213 yards. We laid right here for 15 minutes while he chewed his cud. You got out your cow call to get him to stand up. He was not super interested in that. You stood up to, to get him to stand up. He was very interested in that. And I missed him. And I don't know how that happened. It's very frustrating. It's all right. It happens, man. Don't, don't worry about I've it. I've never done that before. Ever. I've never Must missed. Must be nice, Sean. Must be nice. <laughs> under two, under, yeah, I've never. Yeah. It's so strange. Technically, you weren't under two hundred. Like, I'm not a mathematician, but. Let's go find them. I think they're still. I think we might get on them again. Yeah, we're not. We're not done. They zipped over there. Yeah, we're not done. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, let's go. All right. All right. That's it. Antelope. They ran about a thousand yards. Maybe two thousand yards away. We're walking towards them here. We found the. Saw the buck. Saw his does. So I'll see if we can't get another chance. At those pronghorn.